It's happening, YouTube. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, 45-24 here at the moment. I'm going to let this thing shake out, as always, do its thing. 45-45 up top, 4,500. I saw a tweet today that said that Starlink is consider or uh, Tesla is considering IPOing Starlink separate of SpaceX. Or not Tesla, but Elon. I would like I would I would buy so many shares it would be ridiculous. I would liquidate a good portion of my holdings to buy Starlink uh, going forward in the next decade. I would put all my kids' funds in Starlink. I would put your mom's kids money in Starlink. I would go rob my neighbor and put his money in Starlink. Uh, would or will? I think it's, he's going to do it. I, I don't think it's. I don't think uh, that it's nothing official. I just literally saw a tweet, so I haven't actually looked to see how official it is. I just saw it a couple minutes ago while I was doing my service. But man, if it ever did it, yeah. Do we have speed tests for Starlink? Right now, mine's about a hundred. It pings between eighty and a hundred at my farm. I put it up. So, I mean that that's life changing for people who don't have internet out in the wilderness. <clears throat> Not to mention, I mean, th that's not the reason why I would buy it. The military applications that are not open to the public, that the public don't know about, is absolutely phenomenal. That I do know about, and a lot of other military members know about. Not to mention the fact that you could be in smack dab middle of Africa and get 100 megabytes of internet is pretty amazing. <clears throat> Most IPOs, you need 250 on the account to get in. Well, I can do it. My farm Wi-Fi is horrible. 80 to 100 is what we get in Virginia. Starlink is a walled garden controlled through Elon. No thanks. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> but it's exciting if it does it. That's one of those life-changing technologies. I have patches of 3G service on my commute to work. <laughs> all right, so take a look around here. X's, all green, including the home builders. <clears throat> um, they're all between 0.3 and 0 0.4, 0 0.5. The top 10, all green. Not very much green, but green, except for NVIDIA now just rolled over to 0.1 negative. All right, trickling back up here, 42.27 or 45.27. Do setups and pre-market VPA work? Yep, they do. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do all caps. Didn't mean to yell at you, Robert, or put a or put a backslash on you. All right, so at the moment we've got. Let me go back over. I was trading some futures today to SPX contracts. We have 22% IV, 21 and a half, with $11 premiums at the money. So about 10% lower IV than yesterday. Obviously, yesterday was, uh, you know, a look back into 2022. Can tier two open the chart? What do you mean? It should be open. Is it not open? Do I have not? Uh, oh, sorry about it. There we go. My bad. I do that all the time. I apologize. 4527 coming back up. Uh, we have a whole bunch of liquidity coming on lower. What's up, Stanzo? How you doing, buddy? NVIDIA. Big old red candle. They just tapped their five-minute POC. We'll see if that's a bit of a liquidity grab. ES is 4527. Friday's OPEX is now massively imbalanced to the downside, to the call side. Yep. <clears throat> yep. 45.29 here on ES. Taking a look at the options chain data, by the way, because we do have OPEX in two days. Yeah, Microsoft is up. Apple's up. Amazon is down. Tech is still holding up. Uh, overall, NASDAQ is up 83 points. They were up about 120 at one point. Expiration filter today, 11.15. Um, whole lot of exposure up to 4.45, or down to 4.45, and we are so far above all the, the legs, it's, it's kind of funny. And it's all calls, too, as, as you would expect. 
going into OPEX, which is the 17th. A whole bunch of negative delta starting to build back in. Let's go to the GIX. Man, there's a whole bunch of exposure. That's all building lower here. 446, 443, etc., etc., etc. Mostly positive GIX products, too. 440 ping of my liquidity indicator on the 5 minute for SPY in legitimacy on that with Bookmap. On the 440, uh, let's go take a look. Let's go look at roughly 4400. I've got a little bit there. They just spoofed 4441. You see this cat right here just spoofed? Where'd he go? Anyway, there's a little spoof right there. I don't know how big it was, but uh, aside from that, we have 4500, 4550. Uh, and that is about it. The biggest player here on the chart is 45-45 right here. What does that mean? They plan to go up more? Well, right now, all we have is 45-45, which would be a couple of points off of the pre-market pivot from the PPI. Now, in terms of going forward, obviously, today's expiration. Um, all, the, all the positions on the VIX is, will have been rolled, and now it's time to reposition on the VIX. Uh, kind of what Paul was talking about here is that the the OPEC for Friday is massively skewed to for calls. Now, again, put your dealer hat on. What does that mean? If it's massively skewed, skewed to calls, which is what I'm seeing here on the deltas, because a whole bunch of negative delta, which is going to be short calls for the dealers because that's bullish positioning the market. When the market is positioned bullish, that means that dealers are going to be shorting calls because they're providing the market to us who are buying calls, which results in a very strong negative delta portfolio. Um, and as we're coming into, um, as we're coming into um, OPEX, when the market is positioned aggressively into calls, they're going to, um, as you could assume, that they, they're going to try to expire those worthless. Now, it doesn't mean sell-off. It could mean just consolidation or pin into the Friday moves. And we'll, we'll watch for that. Amazon is getting wiped right now. Big red candles on Amazon. Apple's going way up. Microsoft a little bit of red. Amazon just broke red here too. Google is kind of up and down. They, they had a big green, big red. Meta's coming off. Tesla, uh, another green day. They've put on about 15% in three or four sessions. A lot of craziness there. Uh, ES just bottom wick back up, 45.30. And it looks like they want to undo a little bit of this red in pre-market here. Looking at the POCs and whatnot in the session volume profiles, it's just every day is basing off of the POC, which closes high and moves higher. So it's flag higher, flag higher, flag higher every time. And we're just kind of bull flagging up through this move. Looking on the 120 minute charts, you'll see it. All we're doing is, is you know, we'll gap up and then flag. In fact, the only retracement we've had is the session on Thursday, November 9th, which is where we gathered on that POC and then launched. So the buyers definitely accu have accumulated shares on this move up. Um, not to the degree that we want to see, but it's done that regardless. Did Mrs. Oim like all the anniversary messages? She loved it, yeah. She loved it. She sent me a screenshot of her phone. With, there was like a thousand notifications. It's pretty cool. She loved it. All right, 45.27 here. Another bottom or top wick back over. Haven't moved yet. We do have we do have a very small I'm not answering that right now. We have do have a very small uh, news event at the top of the hour. So if you look here on today's event, 
very small. It is retail inventories after that 1030 crude oil. So a couple of interesting mom moments here for oil if you are a CL trader. One, today we have the oil news. Um, today we have the oil news at 1030. In addition to that, if you look at CL, they are pinned to the daily POC, which is a launch point for price action. So once we gather around the POC and return back to that mean, which we have, now it's time to start moving. Whether up or down here, that is a major pivot. Now, we did already launch off of the uh, 74 pivot that I've had, and now we're kind of retracing back to it. But watch CL as they accumulate around this POC, which is 77.5 right now, if you're a CL trader. And I would not trade CL, me personally, until 1030 news posting. <clears throat> Microsoft dumped back over, Amazon dumping back over, Apple still has not, XLF is 3462. After holding calls for nearly the entire session yesterday, or I should say half the session, uh, it's nice to see a little breather and figure out what we need to do next. What is the red dot number showing above the bubbles? That is the stop indicator. Right here, it shows these stop orders. All I know is I forgot how fun option trading on tech was. I needed a quick refresh on familiarity with the options chain while keeping positions exceptionally low. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Options trading on these on can be exceptionally fun. I mean, that's why we're all here, right? Is because everything that's happened in the past couple of years, which is incredible, to watch these things move. Watching the watching indexes move like this is 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 extraordinary. It's not something I thought I would ever see. Not to mention the individual tech names that support it. Forty-five, twenty-four, still no movement. So the bigger the number means the players don't want to... Well, for me, it's it's all about the stop runs. Now, there's always going to be stops in the market, so seeing the small stuff doesn't matter to me. Um, what I want to see here is that any kind of big liquidity grab, like a sweep, uh, or any kind of just shift through liquidity, I want to see, is there going to be any major stop supported with that move? So if I see it like a two or 1,500 or 2,000 stop order, you could anticipate that you know several stops were moved out, and that could possibly be a liquidity grab. However, between the stops and icebergs indicators, which are they go together, the iceberg is far more valuable to me than the stops. But every now and then, the stop indicator will kind of shine out a little anomaly, and we'll be able to make it actionable. 45.25. What's, what's small caps doing today? Yesterday, small caps put on a phenomenal rally. One of the biggest moves I've seen on small caps, and any other index for that matter, since I can remember. Ever since I can remember, I've been popping my collar. Well, yesterday, small caps popped their collar. It went from 1700 to 1810, which was about a 6% move, right back to their daily POC. <coughs> Excuse me. Small cap is doing everything they can to hold on to their pre-corona highs. They dropped back down to pre-corona highs June of 2022. They rallied off this level several times, uh, all while going down further and further. And now they are pinned right to it with another bounce off their pre-corona highs. So uh, doing everything they can to hold those levels. Meanwhile, the indexes like ES and NASDAQ support of mega, mega paps are uh, well beyond those levels, obviously. I can't remember the last time I've seen the daily chart look this silly, right into the 4500s. Funny if Hedy's rotating to Bonds and Disney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's up, Peter? Hello, Peter. How you doing? Bonds are down. They are down. 
Not much, but they are down. About 1%. Yields are back up. After a massive decline in the yields yesterday, they are all green today. A little bit of volume back up here. Do you think pain for TLT is now a good time? I still think there's going to be some pain in TLT. However, it's still a good time to do dollar cost average. This is a great, great rally. But you see the volatility starting to build both in the equities and in the bonds. I mean, this is max volatility. This is as volatile as you can get on price action, both on the bonds and the equities. And you're seeing that. So it's starting to happen. It's starting to happen. High key has the best hip hop culture references. I love it ever since. <laughs> love it. It's got that old school hip hop, man. It's the best. Am I currently in any positions? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. What version of bookmap should I invest in? It depends on you. Obviously, with TOS shutting down the free um, aspect, there's going to be a lot of people looking to actually get the service back. So if you're only doing ES, then you only need to go into the basic plan with rhythmic data, in my opinion. However, if you're doing pretty much everything and you're trading a lot of different equities and indexes and names, then you need to, well, I'll tell you what I do. I have the Global Plus with Rhythmic, with the MBO package. Now, there are several other indicators and tools on Bookmap you can use. Those are the ones that I use that are uh, great. I pay roughly about between $180 and $200 for everything. Wonder where you can get that Starlink IPO share. So well, it's not official yet, but you'll have to uh, apply for the IPO. Did Bookmap have a Black Friday sale? They will. It's not live yet, but they will. They'll do it live. Am I in a put? No, I'm not. What's your monthly expenditures on trading ancillary data subs? Does that include the TradyTix Discord bot that I pay for y'all? Uh, for my personal stuff that I personally use, it's roughly about 400 bucks a month. About $400 a month. Add another couple of hundred dollars a month for the bots for the server. Uh, yeah, so we're looking roughly $1,000 on everything. All right, so we're still pinned 4523. Amazon is getting destroyed. Huge red on Amazon. <clears throat> Apple's up, Microsoft is flat, XLF is flat. I would very much welcome a consolidation day today. NVIDIA's down 0.85. Yeah. Thanks for the bots again. It's probably worth not having the post Kickstarter. Well, I mean, either way. I just want... I did it because there was a lot of interest for it. And I want you all to be able to access the data you want. As you need. Yeah, NVIDIA's down too. <clears throat> Getting smoked on big NVIDIA red. Uh, they've actually taken out their POC and now they're testing yesterday's low. Which was pretty brutal. Amazon's getting smoked. They have already taken out yesterday's low. Nope, that's not a, that's a lie. They're testing currently yesterday's low. They take that out. It'll be a, a decent move there. Apple and Microsoft, both up. JP Morgan's flat. Do you think it's a bad idea to sell call credit spreads up here? Um, I've already done it. <coughs> so I don't think it's a bad idea. <coughs> When it comes to, in, in the world of selling premium, the great thing about selling premium is that you could stiff arm the market. So when you get a big old upside move like this, I know we don't say the market can keep going. Don't say it can't keep going. I know that. But in terms of expected moves, at some point there has to be a retrace. There's just simply not enough inventory. So on an explosive move like this, I don't mind challenging the market to go up another 100 points after all of this. Because I know if we do go up 100 points, I'll be putting on well enough positions to make money anyway. So if I could collect a couple of thousand dollars on a call credit spread that's stiff arming 100 points above where we are now, 
that I, I want to take advantage of that. So I think I think it is smart to put on um, a call credit spread that's way up and above. Burry took a large short position against the entire semiconductor market. Yep, I saw that. I don't know what to believe with all that stuff, man, because we don't um, we don't know Burry's entire portfolio. Like we don't know how he's managing. We don't know what other accounts he's got. We don't know what his strategy is. So do I think he took a 40% loss on a $1.6 billion short? Absolutely not. I'd be willing to bet he was adequately hedged and he didn't lose anything at all. He's not dumb. He's one of the smartest investors out there. So, you know, I, I take that stuff as entertainment value when I see that post on Twitter and everyone turned into a feeding frenzy. Yeah, it was just, it was notional, definitely. Yeah, the 1.6 was notional. The guy held short for two years before the bubble burst. Yeah, because he saw it coming. Yeah. So they're saying I should take out a $40 million loan to go on a new. <laughs> no. A little bit of raid, 45.20. Amazon getting dumped. Can Apple get dumped? We have 1,400 still trickling off here. Oh, I've been blown out. Yeah, posting collateral, like $140 million a month in collateral, or $10 million a month in collateral, whatever he's posting. It's crazy. Forty-five twenty. Saudi Arabia is cutting their supply into 2024. That should drive prices higher. Maybe a good time to start long on oil. Oh man, what are you doing after hours on mental game after this kind of, after this kind of caught you off guard with bias? Are you second guessing? Um, I mean, it didn't catch me off guard. In saying, I mean, I still made I still made money on this move. Um, what caught me, what what did catch me off guard on this move is the, the the it, extremeness of this move. You know, I was looking for a bounce off POC, but obviously this is a lot very quickly that I did not anticipate. I don't think anyone anticipated this much. Um, <clears throat> honestly, I, you know, for me after hours, not carrying very many positions helps, you know, whatever. I just open up the day and I play the play the day as needed. You know, I, I experienced FOMO just like everybody else. It would have been nice to hold the entire, uh, width of the move, but you know, it's not realistic. 45.18 coming down. We have pre-market lows is on down to 45.14. SPX is currently 45.02. 45.18. First, we get December buy oil grains. Yeah. Yeah, we do have uh, a couple of small data points here in seven minutes. Nothing crazy. There you go. 45.17. Dropping off. Amazon's getting smoked. If Apple can run over, run down, round over, we'll get a little bit of pressure here. Uh, we're also coming down to yesterday's morning high. Whoever bought calls at the lows not too far out is probably a, a millionaire now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's, that's a historical move. We just experienced a historical move. I mean, that's, you would have made a lot of money, a whole bunch of money. Yeah. Uh, NVIDIA is down 1.7. They're getting rocked. Apple is pretty much saving the day right now. If they give it out, we're going to pummel, pummel. Microsoft 370 going to give it up. We'll see if Microsoft is going to give it up or let us down. Usually, just never, never going to run around and hurt you. We'll see, though. 4519, 
Got a little bit more pressure. About to wipe out this 15, maybe even the 4,500. All eyes on Apple to take this out, though. Did we just get Rick, Rick, Rick rolled? <laughs> you did. You did. We're no stranger to love. 45.15. All right, so we're testing this morning low here. I'm waiting for a breakdown, if possible. Tech is starting to feel a lot of pain. Apple, all we need that one to roll over, and we'll pummel. NASDAQ is uh, erasing a good portion of their moves. They went from 049 to 906, so 100 points off. Yeah, today is expiration as well. So watch the VIX for any kind of crazy moves if they start building back into positions for that thing to flip green. VIX currently is green 0.21 after being gapped down slightly red. It's now back to being green. 45.19. We have 4,500, which would be 20 points down. It'd be a beautiful grab to make a move. By the dip, we're already 100 points off highs. Due to today's uh, data about retail change, your view on the sector given the big retail stocks have a low P in the OM. Um, what do you mean? Which sector? 5,900 watch NASDAQ yesterday's close. Yep. Um, Amazon is flagging down at, uh, what, 144. Still not too much movement. I'm going to be selective with what I trade today. The retail sector. I mean, it's... If you're talking about, like, the small cap retails, I mean, it's phenomenal. And right now, a lot of yesterday's move was driven by that. I mean, look, if, if you notice, after we had the big CPI move, tech didn't really do much else. I mean, the afternoon, we had that crazy power hour pump up, like, 20, 30 points. But aside from that, like, tech was pretty mundane... And not, in fact, a lot of them were below their open. So a lot of that move yesterday that was driven by the small caps, which is now seeing rotation into it yesterday. We saw a massive, massive rotation into that tech, or into the small caps yesterday. So now this is also seasonality. This is the time for retails to shine. Seasonality. You know, this is why we have the consumer holiday of Christmas and, and all that stuff. So... Uh, there's it, it's predict it, it's anticipated to be bullish because of the seasonality of retail, that market, and we'll see what the numbers post. So, you know, in, ter in terms of seasonality, I'm I'm bullish on them. Uh, long term into 20, 2024, not so much. Standard deductions for 2024 theft will jump five. I'm sorry, taxes will jump 5.4 percent due to inflation. So there you go, a little five percent jump on your deduction. Forty-five twenty-two. Funny how debt isn't a factor for the market, yet spending could increase it for the season, uh, but also the retail debt. Well, I mean, th that's why I'm telling you, like, don't get in the habit of correlating the market with the economy. Because, I mean, right now, I think it, what what did NVIDIA do the past couple of days? Because, you know, right now, NVIDIA's on spotlight because they have you know, an earnings next week. But what did NVIDIA do? Let's take a look at it. Aside from the fact that uh, NVIDIA, the stock price went up, what did they actually do the past two weeks? The market cap they gained is 10 times, 10 times the value of any earnings reports. 
So how can you even justify that if you are someone who believes that the market and the economy are connected? You can't justify that. It's all about value and liquidity, where buyers can buy value, shift up higher into premium, so they could use that as liquidity. That's all it is. That's all the stock market is. Liquidity. It's an auction house. Nobody can justify a 10 times value gained in two weeks. Nobody can justify, what, 800 times PE right now? Whatever NASDAQ or, uh, NQ or um, NVIDIA. It's all about liquidity. It's all about value. Yeah, data reminder here. There's the data there at 10 o'clock. 280 billion in 10 days, yeah, which is about 10 times their, 10 or 15 times their uh, revenue, yeah. Beanie Babies, yeah. I remember Beanie Babies. Retail debt also means more revenue for companies, yep. So, actually, happy Steve Irwin Day. I don't know that now. Forty-five twenty-one. All right, Microsoft is about to put another low in. Apple finally rounding over. Banks are hanging on to thirty-four sixty-five. I did, it looks like it's going to run again. We'll see. So far, we kind of pinned this 45.21. <coughs> Nothing crazy. Start to carve out the morning range. Uh, morning range right now is 45.30.50. And the low of 16.75. Pretty tight range so far, 14 points. <coughs> Minor position? Currently not. Well, currently no, no scalps or anything, no. Forty-five twenty-one. A little liquidity up here at twenty-five. XLF ain't moving. Spy can't reclaim four fifty. Not yet. I'm gonna hit refresh in the old options chain data here. Just like yesterday, it's hard to get any kind of value off of that data right now because we're so far extended above any of the moves. Uh, the fifteenth. Any of the levels. 445 down to 425 for today. For tomorrow, we've got a huge level at 442. And then for Friday, all lower. I've been leaving my charts on longer time frames lately. It's been really helping with overtrading. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the best way to do it. What does the 15 minute tell us right now? Big old top wick to start the day, bottom wick to follow up. All leading to right smack dab in the middle of the range of 44, 45, 24. If you go to the 30, 60 minute, right now it's painting a inside candle at the moment. So not really actionable. Now I will say the two hour chart starts is starting to look a little toppy. It's starting to look a little toppy. What's up, Danny? How you doing, buddy? Danny Gabagoo over here. Oh man, I need some music. Here goes IWM. Starting to take off. Look at that man, going.
<clears throat> do you have all those time frames in your monitors? I do have a chart that's got several screens on it, small screens. That's literally ES for multiple time frame analysis, so I could look. <clears throat> thing is way down. Why is it so far down like this? It's aggressive. Alright, 45.21. Still not a lot of movement. What's up, John? How you doing? That cold sounds bad. I'm good now. The only thing left over is a stupid, like, scratchy throat at chat like the little bit of uh scratchiness as I'm shaking it but yeah it sucks what's the cost of the third party data feed for bookmap I believe it was like $38 I have to look exactly what it was don't hold me to that I'll have to bring up my statement and look Back up a little bit, a little bit of green. Just looking at something here. Big green. So this is my ES tracker. This is strictly for ES that I do on, but it's got six different time frames on it. So I could look and pretty much get a litmus test of the time frames: three minute, five minute, fifteen, thirty hourly chart and the four hour chart. So if I'm doing any kind of short term trades, I could look at this chart, and be like, all right, well, this is what the different pictures are painting, especially if you're doing any kind of short term trades. Alex Options, who is that jabroni? Yeah, I'm going to delete that until I look at what that is. I don't like posting YouTube videos until I'm able to look at them and make sure that they're not a bunch of jabronis pushing good information. Do you normally size down next week for a low volume or shortened holiday week? Yes. So that's a good question. Next week is a shortened holiday week. So next week you can anticipate the price action to be pretty abysmal, um, which is why I don't mind I'm taking off. I'm taking Tuesday off. So <clears throat> I tried this five month like, yeah, you, and you could use that for anything. That's what I personally use for ES, but you could use that for anything. And you could change the time frames to whatever you want, you know, whichever. Our Iron Condor is a good play for a week like next week with no volume. Uh, yeah. Now, you're not going to get much credit next week. You're going you're gonna to have to play pretty tight, but as long as you're okay to hedge, it's perfectly fine. 
Strat guy. Yeah, I'm sure he's great. I just I like to I like to look at stuff first because I don't want to. I just want to be able to check. I'm pushing good information. I wonder if there is a way to combine the data of multiple time frames and come up with continuity through a script. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there was. Like a multiple time frame VWAP or something like that. Forty-five, twenty-five, forty-five, thirty is being put on. Three hundred thirty-four. So far, we're just creeping, creeping. A little bit of red. Forty-five, twenty-four. Let's take a look at the SRs. Right off R one, holding the S one. TLT is getting smoked. Bonds are coming off. I'm trying to give out all of yesterday's moves. XLF has got a little red. Six creeping back up. At some point, y'all gonna discover the COT report, and someone's gonna be like, "Wasn't there a guy bringing that up every now and then?" <clears throat> For show. IWM is moving, yeah. So it's bringing up everything, which is two days in a row now that the small caps are rallying. I mean, it's jacked. 1.11% took out the weekly high. Forty-five twenty-five, not moving. I do even start the show. Yeah, the past two days, man, it's been the start of the show. It's crazy. Do you think we'll grab that liquidity at 30? It's possible, yeah. Most likely. So they just put that on there and to couple down with 45, 45. Uh, in terms of, you know, we have a nice little bottom wick on the eight, the 945 candle 15 minute. And now we've got this one here, confirmation, which closes in two minutes. So far, it's doji. We have some top wick, bottom wick. Not too much confidence either way at the moment, except for the small caps. Small caps are going crazy. NASDAQ is still down and top wicking down. So not a lot of strength in small caps. Looks a little, little rotation. Profit taking in tech here after a, you know, a, a historical rally into IWM.
yeah, I'll look into it. I mean, you know, I've uh, I always like looking into stuff y'all y'all point out. So what I do, I, I've already got you know pretty much obviously I've got a system in place and I've got all the things I look at. So everything that you all offer or you you recommend, I look into it. If it's a value add, I keep it. If it's not, then no hard no hard feelings. But I've got so much I got to look at. I have to choose very carefully what I implement into my daily routine. Otherwise, it'll be like you know. A toddler trying to hold onto a fire hose, just spraying everywhere. Hard to control. Yeah. Forty-five twenty-six. Starting to get a little choppy on this candle. <clears throat> Amazon's coming down again. Nice, John. Her. It's beautiful. Great reference. 4528 going higher. Right here. Gotta love me some three doors down, baby. It's good stuff. What's up, Pastor? How you doing, buddy? Do you ever think they'll open up options trading overnight? I mean, they already have with SPX. You know, to the open market? I don't know. I never thought they would do SPX every day, but they did that. So. I bet you just missed the buy the dip. Keep complaining about Amazon and end up missing the buy the dip. I don't know what you mean. Forty five twenty eight seventy five, right back up to the high of the uh, morning range, forty five thirty, fourteen points. Let's see here. Forty five sixty SPX is forty five thirteen. <coughs> SPX is moving there. Four five one three. Tech, if tech recovers alongside small caps, obviously small caps are blasting. Um, we'll have a good move here on ES to the upside. There's forty five thirty, climbing higher, to high of the day. Still going forty five thirty. Yeah, so they just wiped out the 45.30 they put on, still offering 45.45, which was on before pre-market or before the, um, the the PPI. The prior high of the day is 45.30, and we just cleared that out. So we do have a new high of the day, and we have 12 minutes till that, till that finishes. <clears throat> do you ever like to trade where the market rotates to? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where the strength is. Now, I, I don't typically trade small caps. Um, however, I do want to watch for the rotation because then you've, if you can see the weakness, you can also trade the weakness in other names too. Took ES long, 4521. Nice. 15 minute confirms there. Time frame, we've got four hour inside. We've got one hour uh, just finish out the top of the last. And everything else looks like some nice time frame up here. Double, We're uh, rejecting the prior morning high at the moment. Small top wick. DXY. Big red on DXY, or big green on DXY after a big red.
4530, holding that one here too. <clears throat> Holding this level. So <clears throat> on the 15 minute here, we're holding this 4530. Now, again, we have to deal with this 4530 and then we'll proceed forward. They came up here to wipe that liquidity. Uh, tech is still feel, taking a beating here. Amazon all the way back down, new low of the day. Uh, meanwhile, the small caps are going. Google starting to bounce back up. NVIDIA, small bounce. Amazon's lower. Microsoft and Apple are pinned flat. Tesla's going all the way back up, new high of the day, and they're about to test pre-market high. So a lot of pushing and pulling here. <clears throat> Overall, an inside day. Get something going here. This thing looks like it wants to blow right through 35 to go to 45. If tech recovers, yeah, off we go. Forty-five thirty-two. Have a trailing stop at aiming for forty-five fifty. I like it. So there goes tech on up. XLF is going up here as well. <coughs> 4525. So that was a reject retest right there as well. So we rejected the morning high, came back down, retested, accumulated on that volume, 1015 volume candle, and now put a new high in, most likely going for that 4540 uh, retest. NASDAQ is going up here too, 19.46, small top wick but holding. Amazon continues to look bad. Yeah, it's the, uh, they're getting smoked. Everything else is still holding off pretty nice though. Was PPI a nothing burger? Relative to yesterday, yeah. We had a little bit of move, but they came in cold too. 45.31. Do I have a wiki of common terms I use inside day? Um, I've got a little bit of a, a library type thing that's not too robust, but I guess I need to do that. All the common terms for beginners. Forty-five thirty-one. First green day for the funded account. Nice, Trev. Was it a funded account or just the... Uh, or just the uh, combine. All right, we're holding this thing here. We're holding this high gathering <clears throat> to shift. Forty-five thirty-two. Seventy five K size, nice. Forty five thirty two. So I cautiously longed off of this retest area. And I'm going to bring this back up. So we re we rejected retest gathered. We had a volume spike as that gather happened, which is a good sign for buyers after the initial rejection. So we had the, we had a low volume rejection trickle off. A high volume comes into to gather that thing higher into 4530, which it looks like we want to regather here at 4535 anyway. See that liquidity being posted, and up we go. Um, Amazon's really the only thing. Microsoft is turning up, getting turned here, and uh, yeah, nice little move. <clears throat> Nice little move. 
Let's see how far this thing can go. There's only 60 bucks a month. I figured, why not? Worst case, I blow it and I don't have money for a week. There you go. There you go. So with those type, you know, with with prop firms, they are just slow and steady. Don't try to pass it in two days. Try to pass it in the entire month, little by little. You'll be a lot better, trust me. All right, so buyers are obviously hitting this thing. The volume hit nicely to, cur to curve this thing up. 45.41 would be the next target on the upside here. Um, the five minute all is continuity to the upside into the pre-market high area. We're still going 45.34. So I'm gonna continue to ride these positions. Um, probably try to get to 45, 45.40. <clears throat> There we go. Still going. 45.34. Just right through that. The Apex scan, I believe, has a time frame of seven days, unfortunately. I think you have to do it at least seven days. Yeah, isn't it at least seven days for Apex? By the way, I found out that Trade of Eight has a trade, uh, a trade copier for free whereas Apex I think it was 150 bucks for that thing so if you if you use trade of eight they've got a trade replicator All right, 45.34, still going. Nice little bull trend. Look at the VPA, completely controlled by the volume. What a nice move off that POC, dude. Beautiful. Beautiful. 45.33. All right, that stopped out right there for profit taking on that top wick. I had a close trailing stop on that. Do I have a standard trailing stop you use that varies per trade? And do you use the percentage or dollar amount? I typically use percentages up until a certain point. Now, if, if things get silly and it's a super green trade, yes, I will use, hey, I'm happy with this profit. Uh, what I will do, though, is I won't necessarily close the trade. I'll just move my stop right up against the price. So if it continues to rally, then cool. I, it's free money to me at that point. But if it stops out, cool. I wanted to get out anyway. So that's something I would encourage you all to do in terms of trades management is that if you're ready to get out of a trade, don't close it. Just move your stop right up against the price. That way, if you catch a runner, cool. It's free money. <clears throat> 45.31 top wick. After filling that liquidity, still no major stop runs. I haven't seen really any major icebergs today, so it's been just kind of a drift higher. But Amazon is kind of putting a damper on the market. And tech in general is putting a damper on the market. This is primarily driven by small caps today. Small caps today. So now that I've closed out my long with that top wick, I would love to see if we could retrace this thing back to pre-market lows. Uh, we can't even grab the 45.40. Yeah, there's 9.30 here in a minute. So the morning range is set. I would assume that 45.35 is going to be the high. Uh, 35.25. We're going to change that to blue. <clears throat> it means it's set. Refresh. Let's see what's going on here. Quan Tower has it for free too. Nice. I've only got one funded account, but it might be worth funding another one. If I could do a trade copier on that thing. Although I hate using trade of eight.
top wick. Quan Towers goaded. Yeah, they were they were pretty good. I tested them out. They look pretty good. <clears throat> Man, nice rejection. 15 minute. We have a top wick on volume. So that right there, 4530. Down back down to POC after rejecting that. That would almost be a double top. We didn't quite get up to 4540, which is the prior, but uh, double top on that. at that 15 minute close there. I hate scalping these small ranges, man. 40, you know, 15, 10, 15 points. It's not much there. $40 million outside the money calls. Jeez Louise. What's the flow today, too? Call selling. I believe it's only seven days to pass, but I sent an email because I couldn't find this topic online anywhere. Huh. <clears throat> Microsoft just dumped over new low of the day. XLF new high of the day, so banks are holding this thing on. And all the X's are green today. So we need to start seeing a little bit of weakness if you do look for downside. In fact, they're all up pretty nice market-wide. Avoid Apex at all costs. They have a million rules for payouts. So they aren't in favor of the trader. Mm -hmm. Yep. Crude oil inventory report. Yep. Larger build than necessary than anticipated. Big old green candle <clears throat> on oil. Short tech today than a yes. It looks like it. Nasdaq is much more weak, uh, much weaker than ES. Much more weaker. Yep. Can you please repeat what you spoke of earlier in the stream regarding the holiday trading? Yeah, next week is probably going to be a pretty pretty slow week. It's a shortened week. It's holiday volume. Not to mention they, they blew this thing, they blew the top off this thing already prior to the week. Took all the steam out of the market, so most likely next week is going to be pretty mundane. Did you say there's a discount code for bookmap? There is, yeah. <clears throat> now, I do have affiliate code that will get you off a couple of different plans, get you money off a couple of different plans, uh, but the Black Friday sale is coming up. I haven't been told when it's going to be live yet, but now your couple of different options are debit spreads or even an iron condor slash credit spreads into a week like next week. Just be aware, premiums are going to be pretty flat. You're going to have to get pretty play pretty close. Volume does seem to be increasing. Yes, we do have uh, the past twenty minutes. The volume is kind of building into this into this forty five thirty.
45.30. Does that portray anything to you? Yeah, so when I see that type of volume come in, not to mention the highest of that volume, is selling volume right there at 10.25. Overall, it's not leading to much at the moment. We've got a lot of up and downs. Microsoft and Amazon put a new low of the day in. Apple's going up to high of the day. XLF is new high of the day. So we just have a lot of pushing and pulling, which is leading to a little bit of choppy price action. Did the screen just freeze? No. Looks like it, though. 45.32. <clears throat> what do you make of the massive gap in the volume profile on the massive pump from CPI? We have a whole bunch of gaps lower. We are above all major uh, volume profile or POCs. We're above. We have a whole bunch of gaps lower. That's why my next upper target is 45.80. Once we take out 45.80, there's nothing. There's, I mean... That's it. That's why I think that's my upside target. I'm kind of bummed out it got there so dang quick because that would have been some nice couple of weeks of bullish trading. They did the entire bull move in two weeks. Still holding 45.30 here. Not much movement. <clears throat> you are going to see calls start to pile back into the VIX. They're going to start building positions back in the VIX now that uh, VIX expiration is over. I guess they're pricing in their next rate pause. Uh, probably. That, I mean, that, that was probably one of the initial reactions off of that, is to drive this liquidity higher. <clears throat> is the fact that they uh, are now anticipating no more no more hikes. Still holding 45.30. XLF is still pretty up. It's been up since the 9.45 move. Amazon's still going lower. Bonds are still going lower. VIX still not moving. Just not a lot of movement in this market right here. We'll switch an individual tickers. There won't be anything for us on SPY today. Yeah, you're probably right. At least nothing more than 10 or 15 points. So they're saying there won't there will be no more hikes. They're saying not only rate they're not, not only no more rate hikes, but they're planning on 50 basis points of cuts by July 2024, which is substantial.
133. Looks like they're back building back up. Every five minute candle making a new high. Yeah, this is big rotation into small caps. Not necessarily a, a sign of strength, by the way. Watching small caps rally is not a sign of strength. The rotation into them. Looks like we just finished that wow pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Any trades so far today? Yeah, I took a call on the holding of the prior high. Did decent. Nothing crazy here. I'm just waiting for the next move. We've been here for about half hour. Uh, why wouldn't that be a sign of strength? Isn't it more breadth? Well, something like yesterday, you could be taken as strength when the whole market is raising together. When the breadth is strong, is what you're talking about there, is when the market is driving together. But when you're seeing rotation, you know, money is coming out of strength and into the prior weakness. So right now we're seeing tech roll over. In fact, Amazon is getting plowed, but small caps are up. And the fact, the nature of the small caps move. Yesterday was almost a limit update for for small cap if that would if if that rally would have happened on the indexes i mean everyone it would have blown everyone's minds but it didn't because it was on the small caps it was almost a 6% day so the fact that the small caps are starting to rally like that shows that the mar the money is starting to fluctuate a little bit maybe pre maybe they used this historical move on nasdaq to take profits and park it into iwm because iwm did not start rallying until nasdaq hit these high levels IWM has been down, down, down until tech came up here and then they rallied, they rotated into them. <clears throat> yeah, small caps, yeah. Well, still not a lot of movement here. Looking for the next move. Let's take a look at small or uh, individuals. Microsoft, Apple is still highs. Amazon getting smoked. Nvidia is getting smoked. Google got smoked. The only thing not getting smoked is Tesla and Apple. Forty-five thirty-three. Right here. Tesla, yeah, Tesla's going crazy. Going crazy. So far, though, we had the opening weakness, and ever since then, market has been kind of just trickling upwards. Now, we've been pinned to this 45.33 realm for a while. Sold my Tesla calls too soon. Yeah. Still going. Of 
Closed at 10.45, candle didn't break above the lower volume. So here's a double retest of that 45.35, the morning high level. Coming on down. Top wick again. What's a jump master in the military? Jump masters are the uh, SMEs. So they're the one that helps the airborne. 101st out in Fort Campbell. <coughs> Mainly. But. higher here. Funny the price targets on Tesla for a minute. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, look at, you know, remember when Kathy put a $3,000 rating on Tesla? And those things go nuts. <clears throat> Still not moving. I want to jump off at AC at 130. Well, go join Spec Ops. It's a great, uh, it's a great gig. Don't hear about her in the news anymore. Yeah, I think she lost a lot of credit, a lot of credibility. She lost a whole ton of money. Funds like that aren't supposed to have those kind of whipsaws if you're going to be taken seriously. Boring is profitable. All right, another retest here. If we could take out this 35, we'll go to 40. Pretty slow stuff here, though. Appreciate her swagger. Yeah. New high, 45.35 and going. Still slow. Apple's moving up. Yeah, new high of the day for Apple. How quick do I move my stops to break even? Um... The way I do it is my first stop is obviously going to be a stop loss. It's going to be in the, it's going to be in the red. And then as the position goes up 30, 35% on short dated options, I'll move it up to break even. And then I'll I kind of play like a 25 to 30% hopscotch. If it you know, if it goes up to 50% profit, I'll bring I'll bring it up to 15 to 20, 25% depending on how aggressive the price action is. Now, in this type of price action, you got to be a little bit more lax because we're not running. Uh, there's like their growth on their premiums are not going to be very hard today. Still climbing higher, 45.36. Apple clear for launch. Yeah, Apple squeezing right now. If tech recovers, this thing is going to fly. It's going to fly.
top week. Did I get back in the calls again? No, not yet. <clears throat> I'm being patient. I'll get my play in. I'll get my play in. Forty-five, thirty-six. Let's go YOLO. <laughs> Definitely. And Amazon's still going down. Apple's still going up. We keep on trying to break through this pre market this uh, day high, but they top week again. Volume's already dropped off. Dropped off again. Top wick. Does anyone know if Bill Gates actually bought an additional 242,000 acres? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him. What do you make of the volume dropping off? Well, right now we had the big volume pump into the 4535 with the volume completely dissipated. So low volume tests are good for upside from here. We'll see what happens. Right now, obviously, nothing's not moving. I'm not getting too excited about a lot of stuff here. But you never know. Top wig. Are we in the middle of distribution phase? It could be, yeah. This is a huge move, and eventually we are going to face some vol some pretty volatile price uh, profit taking. Um, but yeah, we're, we might be some facing distribution soon, which is just fine after this move we had. We have a little bit of volume kind of creeping in right here in this 45.35 after a low volume test. <clears throat> CVD is quite negative. Yeah, it's negative 4,800. But CV, there's no icebergs on the chart at all, which means li lighter participation. Usually when, when I see an environment which with virtually no icebergs, that tells me most likely we're in a bit of a lull with volume. Apple's going crazy here. NASDAQ is still. They took off that 15,920. They've got 16,000. Peak above to 16,000 here. <clears throat> Peak above to 16,000 here. Still no red, just kind of creeping up. Maybe an afternoon move. Hopefully. This is pretty boring.
Not much going on here. Using my time wisely. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy some outdoor fitness before the cold weather starts hitting in a couple of weeks. Still t-shirt weather here. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sure you Canadian people hate that. You're in your parkas. What's the temp in Alaska? Uh, what, negative 30? Negative 20 right now? Red candle, 45-34. That's right, tool man. All right, so this is a double top rejection, healthy rejection off of this level. Now they have 16,000 just got doubled down on on NASDAQ right here. And they put on 4545, they put on more at 4545. <clears throat> made a note to myself to wait for touches line touch to entry. My game plan was to take call off the five minute POC. Never fully came down to it. Never got in. Now the call is going to take up fifty percent from what I was going to get. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. In my opinion, execution is more important than the profit itself, because as long as your execution remains consistent, the profits will come. It's incidental. So don't judge your success based on the position not. You know, you're not, you're not actually taking that position. You, you made a plan, you stuck to it. There's nothing wrong with that. Are we really trying to catch a banger every day anyway? No. No. Especially in a day like this, this is garbage. When you look at options flow and see a contract has the highest volume, do you, how do you know if that's buying or selling? <clears throat> uh, that looks like a dip below here with that liquidity higher. This looks like a dip and rip. Red candle down, liquidity. And they right when they did that, they stacked on higher. And meanwhile, look at the difference in Amazon and Apple right now. It's crazy. And 245.36. What's the significance of the red bubbles? Uh, selling. Now, it looks like your settings may be a little altered because that looks a little weird seeing that much selling on the way up. <coughs> but, yeah, that's selling. All right, 4540s up top. NASDAQ is doubled down on 16,000.
4536. Uh, but yeah, so I don't really care if it's selling or buying on that call because there's really not too much way to know about that ASDF. Um, I do want to know how much participation is in that because if I see a whole crap ton of volume coming into a particular contract, I mean, still, that's interest. That That is activity on that particular contract, which is very telling for an options trader. We want to know about that. Forty-five, thirty-five, still holding. You too, Andrew. Yeah, have a good day. Man, this thing still wants to go higher here. Amazon's getting slammed. Very slow action. Top wick forty five thirty four. Nasdaq new low of the day. Wow. Yeah, Nasdaq or Microsoft just got dumped. Where's all this pressure coming from, man? That's crazy. A lot of mixed signals. <clears throat> A little bit of red. NASDAQ's coming off pretty hard. Topwick flip red on ES. That's a couple of different... Let's go to the 15-minute. Be... Oh, okay. That might be an actionable signal. That's a two-tweezer uh, top right there on a 15-minute chart. If this thing closes tweezer in the next uh, 15 minutes then that's a downside, and I will play that. That's an actionable play on the 15-minute. Right there. Man, I'm taking it. I'm in. Took a put. I'm seeing a whole bunch of pressure coming in right here. And that's a double that's a double top. NASDAQ is dumping pretty low. And ES uh, just put on two top wicks. So we'll see what we can do with this. A little bit more. Pre they removed the upper liquidity and dumped this thing over. So. There we go. A little bit more pressure, 4531. There we go. Nice. <clears throat> Let's see how far this can go. I'm not going to get excited until I can get 4520 out of this thing. Man, Amazon's getting plowed. Look at that. Golly. A little bit more pressure, 4529. All right. Um, that's a pretty quick profit, not going to lie. I'm going to roll my stops up a little bit until we get some continuation here. We're still getting bottom wicks here, but that's a nice move. Can it hold, though? That's the question. Can it hold?
4530. They're adding 4520. Now NASDAQ took off that upper liquidity. ES did not, but they did add 4520s. I got a pretty dang good entry here, so hopefully we can continue on down, but they're already bottom wicking this thing. Apple bought on the, bought this thing up and going back up the highs of the day. <clears throat> Still holding 4530. On what stock? Uh, SPX. SPX puts. XLF finally rolling back over here. I would even settle for a 50% retracement. My target overall would be low of the day. Or, uh, yeah, the morning low, 45.16. Microsoft is holding 369. Amazon's still dumping. XLF is rounding. We have a little bit of pull down here to 29. Apple new high of the day, um, still holding 4530. We've got 369, big old dump on Microsoft with a green follow-up, and 4533. Faked out, not yet. We still have confirmed double top wick on the longer time frames, so we'll see. I got a pretty great entry, so I'm going to have to do a little more to shake me out. Apple's up 189, 3477 XLF, big old green. CVD is 6,400 and building more and more negative. Uh, NASDAQ bounced back up. Microsoft, big green candle after dumping. Uh, let's see. Apple blasted off 189, new high. <coughs> Still holding. About to finish the 15 minute candle in four minutes. Went from a 50% profit back to break even. A little bit more pressure. Still waiting. I was away for a few minutes. Did you? Yeah, I took a uh, SPX put. <clears throat> 
a little bit more pressure coming on down. Confirmation, we have a little bit more cell pressure coming in there, and the 15 minute closes in three minutes. Five thirty-one. Man, we've been here for how long? An hour? This forty-five thirty range? Garbage. Doesn't want to get through forty-five thirty. Now they took off a little bit more liquidity here. <clears throat> and we're just waiting. Just waiting. Oh man. Boring stuff, y'all. Boring stuff. Forty five thirty one, trying to press a little low. Can we get, let's see, we have VWAP at 25. That's also smack dab in the middle of the morning range. If we could take out VWAP, what I might do, though, is set a scale for VWAP. If we can get through that, then this will be a nice little play down to 16. That was a, I got a pretty fantastic entry. And we got a little bit more sell pressure coming in here. What you know about that? There's a little more pressure. Pressure. What do you know about pressure? Lace is out, Dan. It's a great movie. All right, another iceberg lower. So that's the first iceberg we've had in a hot minute. And it's lower. Can we get through this, uh, what is that, 29 level? I'm already up almost 40% on this trade. I need lower. Under pressure. XLV about to get everything back. Yeah. <clears throat> I need this break lower. So far, nothing though. VWAP is 25 and change. Man, what a freaking boring day. I think I'm done. Nice ER swing. Nice. When he fights the Eagles mascot at the end, it was, yeah, it's a great movie. What made you get it? What, you, what made you decide to get into puts when it's clearly an uptrend? Uh, well, it wasn't an uptrend yet because we set the morning high and all we're doing is holding the high. And my definition of an uptrend is not until we break out that morning high. Otherwise, it's just a range day. So we came up against 4530 or 4535. We have an obvious resistance because we already rejected 4535 at 1015 at 10.45, and again at, at 11 o'clock. On top of that, Microsoft started dumping, XLF started rolling, and they took off that upward liquidity on Bookmap, that pull. And not to mention, more important than all of that, VPA. We had a double tweezer top there, or a double tweezer is actually uh, redundant, just a tweezer top there at uh, the top of the hour on the 15-minute chart, which just clo close confirmed. So, that's usually a pretty pretty bearish indication, especially on the 15-minute chart. So we should have a decent retracement back down to at least 25 or so off of that move. You're welcome. So if you come over here and look on this, that's what I mean. On the 15-minute chart, double tweezer right there. I did it again, just tweezer. Bam, bam. Basically a double top, a very short double top with the increase in volume. 
Nice little move. Warren Buffett says buy Siri, 19% in pre-market. Even I couldn't do that. Yeah. I think, yeah, Warren Buffett carries a whole bunch of clout. That dude's like Santa Claus for the stock market. Last time Tweezer happened, it took a good 45 minutes for the move to complete. Yeah, especially on the 15-minute chart. Yeah. They put on a whole bunch. Look at that. Look at that iceberg or the liquidity they just put, 45.30. A whole bunch of liquidity. I was thinking of buying a building to open a tractor-trailer equipment shop. Nice. If that's your expertise, man, I'm all about entrepreneurship. All about it. Do it. I'd love to buy one share of Hathaway. Yeah, I mean they have some they have some stuff smaller stuff too. You don't have to buy the uh, what three hundred fifty thousand dollars share. Apple shouldn't be going this crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome to the market. Is real estate going to drop more? Probably, but if you're op looking to open a business long term. You just got to do it. If you, you always wait for a better time, you're going to be waiting forever. We have 10 minutes until Euro close. There's a nice little move. Get this thing to dump. Man, if I can get this thing to 16, that would be a glorious play. Glorious. I would hang I would shut the I would shut my broker down for the rest of the day. Be done. Just need to dump down to sixteen. <clears throat> What is 16 relative to SPY? Uh, roughly 449.40. Low of the day. Let me hit refresh in the old options data. They just spoofed this guy right here, 45.29. But we are pinned. Ain't, ain't going nowhere. Where are we going? Nowhere. Big green candle. 
right on back up. 45, 33, 25, no volume. I found a building near me, 7.5 acres with five buildings, 4,000 square feet, 5,000 taxes. There you go. Do it. Love it. Forty-five, thirty-three. Not wanting to give them up much here. Do you think we'll fill that 45-45 today? I hope not. At least not at the moment. We could, probably, yeah. I just want to get out of this put first. Forty-five thirty-two. POC is lower too, man. 45-16, 45-20. Sometimes I wish my expertise was in a more useful field than cooking. Margins are so bad in that industry. Yeah, but it gets you the ladies. It gets you the ladies. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced that's what got me Mrs. O.M. It's cooking. <clears throat> What's POC? POC is a point of control. Point of control is the largest distribution of volume on the volume profile for a particular time. And this is about to completely uh, negate the tweezer here. I'll give it a few more potatoes. My break even is right here. Amazon's still going lower. Apple is rocketing as if they cured cancer. Straight up. Nothing else is really doing much. XLK is creeping back up 4532. How many times are we going to reject 35? <clears throat> Currently, I make my girlfriend the same bowl of ramen for anniversary. She loves it. She just loves when I cook for in general. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I'd love to have your ramen recipe. We also love ramen. What's the difference between profit taking and liquidity grabbing? Mainly it's the price action and the volume associated with it. <clears throat> it's definitely not a dumb question. And it's the intent. The, the, the main difference is the intent. Profit taking is simply people reducing a little exposure off their books. Liquidity grabbing is in the intention to accumulate more shares to make a move or to distribute more shares to make a move. Top look again. I got deadlifts today, people. Deadlifts. There's no reason to live if you do not do deadlift. Dump already? Yeah. Aside from the food, I am working on my confidence in this market. Two for two, very small wins, but feel good. There you go, Bay. There you go. One of my favorite meals Mrs. Wem likes that I cook is uh, Cajun chicken pasta. It's a copycat recipe from Cheesecake Factory. But I make it better than Cheesecake Factory. Once I get stopped out of Amazon, put I think I'll call it a day. This channel has helped me so much. Nice, Sim Dork. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Another top wick. Excellent. That's good for our positions, right? All we need is 4516. Heck, I'd even I'd even take 4500. I'd even take 4470 at this point. I mean, come on. Is that too much to ask? Not hard to make things better than Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, that's true. Very true. I'll refer back to our conversation from yesterday. 
What's the blue line at 45.20 mean? Uh, that is liquidity right here. Trend balloon, trend bologna sandwiches. <laughs> Dude, I would kill for some trend. Let's do it. Get out of here. I just flexed. It takes an hour to read the menu. Cheesecake Factory, yeah. You need a camera so it's like a Twitch stream. I'll, I'll get a camera one day. I thought about doing that. Get me one of those fancy cameras. That'll be the next upgrade for, this, for the server. It'll probably scare a lot of people off, though. I look like a sloth. I'll be like, hey, you guys. Beautiful sloth. That's right. All right. Another top week on the 15-minute. I haven't even come off the 15-minute. <clears throat> Can we get 45-16? That's the question. Make sure you have a baby Ruth. <laughs> yeah. Love it. I watch a guy on YouTube. He split screens his trading screen and does picture in picture window of himself. Yeah, I see a lot of guys do that. I get, it's kind of weird to me. It's like, why? What? What benefit is it to, for you to see my face like as you're trading? I guess it comforts people. If you have the hots for me, I guess it works. But I don't know. <laughs> Appreciate that. To know you're human or not an alien. Make sure your hair is good. I don't have any hair. So that's pretty easy. I'm Human. Hello, welcome to Options Millionaire Channel. I could be a reptilian, yeah. Johnny Five. Input. <coughs> Great movie. I gotta show those kids those movies to my kids. My kid would call the graphics of that movie off brand. I've heard of traders who watch themselves so they can review it later for inside an emotional state through facial expressions. Silly stuff. Interesting. Do I shave every day? Not anymore, I don't. Not anymore, I don't. Forty-five thirty. Oh man, Euro close. Yep, right here. No movement whatsoever. We're going to give it a few more minutes as I'm managing the position, and I'm going to call it a day. I'll just set stops on this position and go do something a little bit more productive. This is pretty disgusting. <clears throat> pretty disgusting. A few more potatoes. A few more potatoes. Hey, I appreciate the support, Corey, as always. I love you uh, hanging out the channel. Supporting the community as always. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Y'all are awesome. 45.30 are starting to piss me off. <laughs> I love it. Taking it personal. <clears throat> love it.
You too, some dork. Appreciate it. Forty-five twenty-nine. Uh oh, we may break thirty. What are we doing? I wish I was like I'd be to be a four one filler one for sale on twenty twenty from the hospital. Big dump on Apple, pop on Amazon. Yeah, a little rotational there. A little bit more red. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? All right, there is 50%, almost, like 47%. But we got to get down. Come on, Coolio. Speak from the grave. Let's see it. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Come on. Nope, bottom wick. Bottom wick. We just absorbed that little liquidity at 27, and we're back up to 45.30. There we go, bottom wick. This is absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Back to 45.30. Hey, there's some red. Just kidding. Any guesses on whether the Fed is done hiking? I do think they're done hiking. Hey! There's that gabagoo. One more push, I can afford me some Taco Bell for the day. Come on. Give me the 4520. Here's what I'm going to do, jabronis. I'm going to set a limit order for some of my contracts at $8.80. That will give me 100% on this transaction. We're almost there. We're at $7. We're at VWAP, though, so we got to get the VWAP. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. That was a nice little move down, though. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Get it done. Seven dollars and ten cents. One more push. One more push. There's eight dollars. Let's go, baby. Give me that forty five twenty. So slow. One more push. There we go. 45.24. This is some nice healthy movement. Five more points. We'll get down to 45.20 liquidity. That should give me my hundy. XLF finally top wicked and went over. I don't like it when the candle hold down here and doesn't move. It makes me nervous. I need to push. I'm on the 15 minute chart. 
<clears throat> we are below VWAP, so that's good. Um, XLF is drilling lower, that's good. But we're not getting any follow through yet. All right, here's a little bit more. There's eight dollars and thirty cents. Almost there. The sellers are kind of hitting this thing right now. We need forty-five twenty. All right, there's a little more push. Get out of here. Let's do it. Get down. It's not a tumor. Three more points. Nice move. All right. Um, it's making me nervous. Do it. Do it now. Beautiful trade. Yeah, that was pretty good. I, I was. This is a good trade <clears throat> uh, because it was technically sound with VPA. Nothing else. So. XLF is coming off. You're welcome, Tracy. Tracy, just set your trailing stops. That's all. Set your trailing stops. All right. Um, I'm going to cancel my 100% profit or my 100% limit order. And I'm going to bring up positions to scale because it doesn't look like it wants to finish out. Finish out. And I rarely hold an entire position the entire way. Uh, but as long as it holds it under VWAP, we'll see. I need to learn how to do that in Weeble. Do what? The trailing stops? Yeah. I haven't taken an exit yet. <clears throat> if we can hold this, we'll probably touch the 16, which will be a very nice position. That might be even close to 160% if I can get 45-16. What do I think about the upcoming OPEX? I think it's going to be flat or red. If it is green, it's going to be more of a consolidation green. They have to expire calls. They have to destroy the calls. All these calls are in the money. Just like the big green we had on the red OPEX, now we need to expire the calls out of the money. There we go. Come on. Give it to daddy. Give it to daddy. Give it to daddy. One more push and I'll have my 100%. I'll have effectively doubled my money for the day. Because I went zero, I went full port on my zeros right now. Just kidding, by the way. <laughs> Just kidding. At WSB trade. There's eight dollars and eighty cents. There's a hundred percent officially. There's eight dollars, eight ninety. There's nine dollars, hundred percent Yahtzee. Not too bad of a trade if I do say so myself. Not too bad of a trade if I do say so myself. Nine dollars and forty cents. Haven't taken an exit yet. I am going to take that. <clears throat> Freaking beautiful. Nine dollars and sixty cents. Ten dollars. I just got my first exit. I closed about thirty percent of the position. Now we got now we're rolling, baby. Now we're rolling. Guess what? Now we're coming up on two hundred percent. Let's do it. There's a hundred and thirty percent already. Bottom of the channel is 45.16. I do want to take off some more exposure there. If we cover 45.16, all right, cool. Gravy train with biscuit wheels, baby. But I have to account for 45.16. 45.10 coming on. Man, what a trade. What a trade. It's nice to get something done after this stupid week. It's nice when VPA works. All right, 45.21, 45.10 below. All 
I'm going to bring up the remainder of positions, not all of it, but I'm going to bring up uh, roughly another 40% of the transaction up. You got 15, 150%? I'm almost 150% now. Yeah, I'm at about 140% now myself. I got 45 tens. What is that? 45 diez. It's a lovely trade, yeah. Uh, 1105, um, Walker. That makes me think of Yellowstone. <clears throat> Just had a Tropic Thunder flashback when you joke you went full port. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the, the buyers aren't bottom wicking this thing yet. We've got a little bit more. I've only closed out about 30% of the trade at 120% or so. We're still pushing lower. I've got about another 40% or give or take left uh, open here. And then after that, I'll leave on some runners. Here's $10.20. We just cleared out that liquidity. The bottom of the day is 45.16. I have to scale out some at 45.16. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Push. Push. Breathe. Breathe. Can we get through 45.20? After this, I'm calling it a day. I promised the market gods I'd shut my broker off if we got 45.16. So once we clear that, I, I have to hold up my end of the bargain. <clears throat> sure, Nicholas, yeah. All right, there's 10.50 pushing down. 45.16. Don't believe, bad juju. It was a tweezer with volume confirmation. Correct. Uh, Mad Madmuck. That's correct. All right, here's the here's the the 15 minute candle just closed. We're starting the next one. We need this one to hold bearish into 45.16. So far, it's not. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Three-point bounce so far. Four-point bounce. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's funny how the closing of a 15-minute candle immediately changes the price action of the next candle. The cycles. It's crazy. The second the 15-minute candle closes, it switched to buying. Forty-five, sixteen, forty-five, twenty-four to view app. The volatility, yeah, definitely, definitely. Five point bounce so far. Six point bounce. Still going. Right back up to VWAP. Cut my profits on half on the remainder, but that's okay. I've already secured my 100%. Still think it's going to touch 16. There's my top wick. I should be doubling down here. On down to 45, 16, 45, 10. 440. Forty-five twenty-four. Oh man! All right, holding the top wick here. We've got forty-five ten liquidity. Uh, we've got forty-five thirty up top. Time frame continuity. We have a top wick on the four-hour chart. Nasty top wick on the four-hour. We've got. 
the one hour is obviously pretty red. 15 minutes putting on a green. Nice, Kiba. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> Do I see an inverse cup and handle? I personally don't track those. I don't even know how to apply to a cup and handle. Forty-five twenty-four. I got 22% and I'm deep in the green for the week. Nice, Hammy. You went ham on the week, on the chart this week. Well done. <clears throat> Microsoft is still going lower here. XLF put on a strong bounce. And we're still top wicking on the 15 minute. I'm still going to hold the rest. You jump to these puts based on red volume. Uh, correct. 15 minute tweezers. Yeah. Plus we had they took off book map liquidity higher. Microsoft started session pressure. So I had some I had some continuity across a couple of different measures on which I track and uh, worked out pretty well you know the fact that they couldn't break 4535 pretty telling did you set stops luck and profit yeah I've already closed out about 30 percent of the trade at 120 percent profit I'm still holding the rest it's still it's sitting at about 80 percent profit now which is kind of a bummer considering it's at 150 but uh, we'll see I'm gonna be patient to see if this thing can uh, fail back down to 45.16. I'm not seeing much continuation after the the first green candle we had there. <clears throat> I was able to catch some action from candles. Nice, Peter. 45.20 liquidity. Do you have any stops remaining for the remaining runners? Um, not right now. It's because I've brought up my order form up for the entire position. Because if this candle closes green back up, then I'm, I want to get out. I don't want to give back much. But we're failing here, so now I'm going to start rebuilding my stops if this starts to continue down. Mainly because I don't necessarily trust the charts too much today, given the fact that it's kind of live volume and, and chopping. A little bit more red here. I think CCS for next Friday could be good. Yeah. Am I in a call or put? I'm in a put. I entered a put at uh, 10.05. 11.05 Eastern.
a little bit more red. Back over 100%, which is good. We have another iceberg coming on lower. So we have another iceberg lower, which is good. Microsoft is rounding back over. Hopefully that's just a blip in the a blip in the radar for the for the sellers here. We can put a new low of the day in. I was going to put this morning cut with a big loss. Now it's a gain if I hold on to it. Well, it's all right. Just uh, you're good. Uh, don't please don't kill yourself. A little bit more red. Can we come on down to 45.16? Why am I going to put? I had a great entry. I took a put right here. Double tweezer top right there. Worked out pretty well. <clears throat> Still holding. Come on, baby, drill it. Give me that 45.16. 45.16 also matches up with the 15. Now, one of the reasons why we're sticking up right here, two-hour POC. <clears throat> two-hour POC. Remember the Zoom call we did on, on Sunday. <clears throat> so this is a very pivotal point for the Bears. Remember the Zoom call. We talked about this exact setup. If they, This is a pivot point right here. If they give this out, we're facing extreme pressure. So this is a big move. I go smoke a blunt to relieve that type of thinking. Can't get them all, so smoke it anyway. There you go. I didn't get an invite for the Zoom call. Uh, you got to look at the Zoom call channel. I post all the links there, and I ping everyone with it. So if you're tier two, go up uh, into the Options Millionaire uh, section, the Options University, and look at the Zoom call channel. All right, top wick this thing and we go it. Roll it. Let's go. It's also recorded and posted on the website too. So if you missed it, you can go back and rewatch it. Well, they're all recorded. You can go watch them all. All recorded. Forty-five twenty. Still holding. Another another liquidity level we just absorbed at twenty. I'm I'm tempted to go ahead and take a little profit here. Although this is a bear flag. This is a bear flag. I hope SPX loses 4,500 so we could free fall. Um, well, in normal market behavior, you don't ne normally expect to see a complete reversal in one day. Usually it's, you know, a little bit of consolidation, red, then green, red, then green, and finally a bunch of red. Obviously, we, that's not what we got to initiate the bull move. So, how is it a bear flag? This right here. That's a bear flag. <laughs> oh, man. 
I was taught to cut the wicks off when doing fibs. Uh, I personally don't like removing wicks from any analysis. Wicks are transacted price action. You can't you can't disregard that in my opinion. I'm, I'm more of a volume of a, of a price action purist though. I think if it's transacted, we need to pay attention to it. Come on, baby. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. 4516. <clears throat> so I mean it should go down more? Um I'm looking for 4516. Yeah. Top wick down. See if we can move this thing down. <laughs> yeah, XLF is definitely not helping. Definitely not helping. Forty-five twenty-two. Oh, have you ever used buy and sell volume as an indicator instead of single colored volume bars? Um, I have, yeah. It doesn't really provide me additional value. <clears throat> it looks like NVIDIA's second leg flushed to 485. NVIDIA. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about ready to take some profit on these puts. Not close them all together, but just to do the smart thing. I'm at, I'm, I'm over 100%. This is a good trade considering the session. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. Bring up my order form. Close limit. Limits. Limits. Reminds me of calculus in college. Ever tell you about that story? It's terrible. 22. <clears throat> Can you speak on psychology of holding winners? I often cut too early out of it and fear will turn red. Yeah, build a plan. <clears throat> What's your plan? What's your target? If you're just white knuckle holding a position, then you're not going to do so hot. You're going to get shaken out. Have a target, have a plan. What's your target to get to take profit? What's your target to get out in the event that things go wrong? Right now, if we break this bull f bear flag back higher, anywhere near 45.24, I'm closing the whole thing immediately. Even if it is a liquidity grab to go back up and come down. Uh, my target is 45.16, and that's what I'm really going to start looking to get out. If we get 45.16, then I'm going to close out most of the position, and I'm going to leave on runners for a possible test of 4,500, at which that probably will yield about 400%. But have a target. Right now, I've got a stop level. And I've got a target level. <clears throat> There's a top wick back down. 
Don't be like Mike Tyson, or be like Mike Tyson. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Then you just start swinging. Don't do that. There we go, baby. Give me 45-16. So you'll close all the position. If it breaks 45-24, I'll close the whole thing. The whole kit and caboodle. If we get down to 45-16, I'll close about 80% of it. Leave on 20% for a move down. Right back inside the flag. I have a plan and I still panic and exit before a plan. I hope that's that's trading maturity. That's your psychological maturity when it comes to trading. You gotta be able to build that, sharpen the axe. All the metaphors. <clears throat> Are your target levels based around the levels you post in the morning? Uh, yes and no. It depends on the current environment. Right now, S1 is pretty much the low of the day, which is also the low of the day which I'm looking at to play. If we break this out, S3 has got is written all over it. This market's got S, S3 all over it. But we still have to get through that level. <clears throat> Still holding 45.20. Anyone thinking of taking calls off this level? I need to see a little bit more before I start look at blindly looking to go long here. Uh, we still have a little bit more. 45.16 would be a great time to possibly scalp along. Possibly. But right now we're kind of in, in limbo land here. <clears throat> Oh man, 4517. We're at the bottom of the channel, so POC is so tricky. I'm watching the 5153. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon is still getting crushed. Man, how far are they down right now? They're down 1.7%. NVIDIA's down 1.6%. Microsoft is down 02 Oh, man. Another green. <clears throat> On a trend day, in your opinion, how many times does the market offer a good point of entry for a position? It really depends on the type of trend. It depends. You know, lately, these trends have been so egregious that it's hard to get an entry. You just got to take an entry and set a stop. But usually I love I loved for refreshment or for retracements. I mean, I love refreshments too. Retracements back down to like to the 8, 34 AMA, POC, those type of levels, those strong confidence bounce levels. <clears throat> Fix
Six is holding 14, 19. Who doesn't love a good refreshment? That's right. Speaking of refreshments, it's about that time. It's about that time. Top look again. That's two top licks in a row. Forty-five twenty-one. Can we get the dump? <clears throat> I hope this market ate a whole bunch of Taco Bell last night and drank a whole bunch of coffee this morning. Forty-five seventeen. Shift lower, baby. Little bit more red. Can we get forty five sixteen? That's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> Still no movement. There we go. There's a little more push. There's a little more push. Top wick. We have another double top on the 15 minute. See this right here? Right here. Look at that. Double top. This is my initial entry right here. Right here. Now we have another one. 15 minute chart. <coughs> we have a new morning low. Oh, no, we don't. I'm sorry. 4516 is a new morning low. Unfortunately, Theta kind of ate into this position, so it's not as good as I thought, but 45.16 is going to still stick into my plan. Let's see. Um, $13.20 is 200% for me. I still have a ways to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and bring up about 80% of the, of the remaining position, and I'm going to close when we tap 45.16.75. That's the morning low. What you, what you know about that? What you know about that? Come on, baby. Almost got down there. There. We're at ten dollar and forty cents for the premiums. One more push, and we'll get down to this level. This could get ugly if volume comes in and takes us even lower. Yep. So if we take out this POC level on the 120, then yes, it could get very ugly. But that's a big if, of course. That's a big old if.
What do you think of zero DTE credit spreads versus buying calls and puts? I'm a big fan of credit spreads. I'm currently holding an iron condor for the week. I don't trade zero DTE credit spreads anymore. I used to do it a lot. I just got tired of hedging them. I got tired of worrying about them. It was affecting my trading. <clears throat> so I stick with uh, weekly credit spreads, which I do quite frequently. All right, another stupid bottom wick. I'm getting ready to close this out because I want to go get some lunch. I'm hungry. What's up, Bashir? Thank you, buddy. Thanks for being here. Let me know if you have any questions. No such thing as a dumb question. Big old bottom wick. 15 minutes. Come on, man. I thought that was going to give me 16. Liquidity grab on NASDAQ. Uh, there's not enough volume to really look to look at it as a liquidity grab, although the price action kind of looks like it. <clears throat> I'm just sitting here on the 15-minute chart. Fifteen minute doji. Yeah. Yeah. Still being very patient. I've held this trade for an hour and ten minutes. I'm looking for forty five sixteen. Forty-five, nineteen. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Oh man, is this your first trade of the day? This is my second trade of the day. I took a call earlier, and I took a put. Uh, obviously, this current position I'm holding now. My grandmother passed away recently. I'm sorry to hear that. I left behind her marketing business. My dad also asked if I, if I wanted it. I told him I'd think about it. Do you think I should take it over? It seemed like a good learning experience. Just want to mess up her legacy for inexperience with that. I do not think, in my opinion, your grandmother would fault you for trying, even if you failed. It's her business. And if it was successful business, which it looks like it is, <clears throat> I mean... Why wouldn't she want you to try to to further her on her legacy? She definitely doesn't want it scrapped. She definitely doesn't want it to see it just all right. Well, I'm her life work is over with. Give it a shot, dude. I tell you this: you could try it, and you could fa you could fail. You could never do it, and have regret. Which one would you rather have? There's nothing like the pain of regret. Suffer the fa suffer the pain of defeat or suffer the pain of regret. Which one do you want? Do it. That's the problem with everyone nowadays. The the biggest entry to entrepreneurship, people are a bunch of pansies. They're terrified of failure. Oh, no. But what if it doesn't work? I need the W-2 teat. Mama. They're terrified. Everyone's afraid of their own stupid shadow. And they live mediocre, mundane, boring lives because they're afraid to take a, a risk.
Take a risk. Do it. I got you on speaker. I'm putting on my headphones from now on. <laughs> I didn't say anything bad, did I? Anyway, I love motivational like talk, man. Like minded individuals. You gotta you gotta talk to people like that, dude. The suckle sound was extra. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> That was the most thought out, well conclusion. Loved it. That's all right, Andrew. Definitely. Emphasize your point. Motivational. That's right. That's right, Paolo. <coughs> sometimes, my, sometimes my girlfriend looks at me because of OM's jokes. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Just wish I had an idea for a startup. Go research some. Yeah, dude. I mean, it doesn't. You don't need some sort of crazy d idea. Find out where the holes in the market are. What What's the biggest hole in the market right now? Blue-collar work. Trades. Be an electrician. Be a welder. Be a plumber. My father-in-law is an electrician. My brother-in-law is a plumber. They both own their own business, and they both probably make as much money as I do. Maybe not quite, but they still do very well from themselves. I know how many shares of cat my, my father-in-law has. It's egregious. The point is, is that you don't have to do anything extravagant. You don't have to go find some genius generational idea like Elon Musk. Just go do something. Fun story. Back in college, y'all know this, I used to sell cell phones. I worked at Verizon Wireless selling cell phones. Made a great amount of money doing it. Nowadays, you can't make crap doing it. But there was a guy who came in, he had like 275 cell phones on his account. He was a landscaper that owned his own business. He started out literally pushing, push mowing yards when he was like 15, 14 years old. And that became two yards, three yards, you know the deal. Now he's, you know, at the time he was 45, 50 years old. He had hundreds of employees. He had dozens and dozens of trucks. He was making, his cell phone account alone was like $150,000 a month in, in fees. I mean, there's no telling how much money he was making. All it takes is just hard work. You don't need a crazy idea. Just do it. And you just work hard. Anyway, I'll hop off my soapbox. I teach an entrepreneur class at the University of Colorado. I have a whole class of just motivational speaking. Yeah. <clears throat> If I did not try, I would not. I would, I would have lost out on the money I made. Yeah, far better is it to dare mighty things than to rank with those timid spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much, because they live in a gray twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. I love it. It's a beautiful saying. It's beautiful. I'll let them know it today and give it a go. Hoorah, baby! Get me pumped. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. There is no such thing as growth in comfortability. It's impossible to grow in comfort. You have to grow being uncomfortable. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Do it. Stop hitting snooze. Stop saying I can't, I won't, I don't, I hate. The world doesn't care if you don't like something. I have owned several businesses since I was 14. I have owned my own current sign and printing business in 2008. I make mistakes every single day and would change nothing. Stagnation is death. Absolutely. <coughs> is this the kids' bedtime stories? We have these talks all the time. Even with my 8-year-old, I have these talks all the time. Does this guy trade? He rambles on about nothing. Nope, I do not trade at all, Portuguese. I do no trading. I sit here and I give motivational talks. I definitely didn't just hit 140%. Definitely didn't do that.
what I preach to my players. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. I started a bench with $500 and bought me six acres, cheap trailer for 45000 Tore it down and built a house and paid it off in three years. It was all hard work, but I did it. LMAO. Oh, man. You might have to see a doctor about laughing your butt off like that. There you go. Here's my chart. 45.35 come up top. We're about to hit my stop on this trade, 45.24. Just like lifting weights. You don't build muscle unless you burn off the fa burn and fail. Yeah. Well, we haven't broken out of this channel yet. Um, we've got a doji on the 15 minute. And, uh, yeah, we haven't hit my stop target yet. And we also haven't hit my target profit yet. So, 45.16 uh, is still not hit yet. We've kind of been chilling sideways. So, <clears throat> hence the motivational speaking. I really like 45.16. Still learning to stop out and not be filled with hope for a turnaround. Well, that's why it's, it really helps to, to define your parameters. What are your parameters for your trade? And stick to those, adhere to those. If we touch 45.24, I'm out completely. If we touch 45.16, I'm scaling out 80% of my trade. So, just set your parameters and get out. Um, I do have a stupid question. No such thing as a stupid question. Even though we have been rising so much, VIX is still sticky. What would that be? Uh, today's VIX expiration, so you're going to have a lot of weird behavior with the VIX. You're going to have the VIX going up alongside ES. You're going to have the VIX going down, although we're going down too. All that kind of stuff because they're repositioning into the VIX. They just mean reverted the VIX into the center of the earth. So now is where you're going to start to see that more of a consolidation action on the VIX. What is the VIX? The VIX doesn't have to go up and down alongside the equities. The VIX is 28 to 35 day out option chain positioning. Which means if we're sitting there worrying about a zero DTE action on the chart, the VIX may not correlate with that. The VIX is now going to start positioning for the next month. Which right now hasn't really done it because we're still pinned to 14, upper 13s, lower 14s. If you start to see a big spike on the VIX, that's when you know that the dealers are saying, all right, this has been a great run. It's time to start positioning for a p potential downside. You're welcome, Bashir. The audacity of hope of a turnaround is bad for me. Well, that is an emotion you probably need to quell <clears throat> in the market. So... Anytime you're involved in the market, obviously, you want to remove hope. Um, now, it's okay, to, it's okay to have those emotions. I mean, I have hope that this is going to go to 4,500. But you can't, you can't put that into action, the hope. Um, and that's why 45,24, I'm out. 45,16, I'm, I'm out 80%. So. And, that, you know, that takes experience. That takes maturing as a trader. It takes maturing as a trader. Applying yourself. Man, what a slow day. 15 minute on Amazon is like a black diamond ski slope. Dude, I can't wait. 30 days almost. 33 days until I'm in Vail. Can't wait. My favorite place in the world. Going skiing this Friday? Love it. All right, there's the green. 
So, uh, <clears throat> I'm bringing up my order form. They had to wipe that one, man. It's cold there? Good. I like it cold. Feels slow over position or something. Yeah. Florida braces for flooding. Speaking of which, I need to I need to reach out to Lee Rat. I haven't talked to him in a couple of days. What's he doing? I was employed. I was self-employed for thirty years. Ask anything. That's awesome, vampire. I love it. All right. <clears throat> 45, 24, 25. First day I had a gain in a long time. Is there room for a call position on SPX? Yeah. So, obviously, there is, you know, we, if as long as they hold this level, they might have a good retrace back up, 45, 30 or so. Now, this chart is very, very slow, so you may want to kind of tip towards futures today. In the big scheme of things, we're not dealing with very much price action here at all. At all. Go on skiing this Friday. Nice T-Waz we're at. I think we're try we're going to try to go skiing at Big Sky when we go to Bozeman in February for the conference, by the way. So if anybody wants to go skiing in uh, Big Sky, we may try to do that. In addition to other activities. But that's just mainly for us. All right, I'm out of my puts. Back to flat. <clears throat> Forty-five twenty-four held, so I'm out. Best exit was a hundred and forty percent. Worst exit was that one, which is about sixty percent. Park City, nice. Can we add a Florida tier for 149 to start stream at 5 a.m.? <laughs> You're welcome, Vampire. 27, nice mojo. We need to have an entrepreneur channel. I think we did have an entrepreneurial channel at one point. I don't think many people used it. Hogwash, Florida. <laughs> all right, y'all. Um, I'm going to call that a day. <clears throat> Pretty dang good profits, all things considered. We got a good trip. We got a good trade in. Had some good, uh, had some great motivational talk, despite the all the YouTube people hating it. But it's good stuff. I'm a big person of entrepreneurship and motivation. I love it. I consume a lot of self-help books, a lot of motivational content. You got to get your mind right. And now this thing's gonna dump. Watch this. That's okay. Stuck to my plan. <clears throat> I'm legally ob obligated. You're right. Legally ob ob obligated. I have two sons in Montana. They love Big Sky. Nice, Carl. I've always wanted to go up there. Never been there. <coughs> so, all right, y'all. It's been a great morning. Good talk. Good trades. Y'all don't get chopped up here. I would recommend kind of taking on some futures instead of options for today. Now, here's the deal. If they happen to drop and take out 45.16 and hold it, this could start to turn into a bit of a pressure into tomorrow. Tomorrow and Friday. So watch it. Until then, I'm not really going to focus on trading too much today. This is pretty choppy unless things break. I'm going to set a volume alert. And obviously, if things pick up, we'll come back on this afternoon and do some trading on Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday. We've got our books, book map stream tomorrow as well. So we'll be having at least two streams tomorrow go from there. Uh, I don't know yet, Mike. I'll, I'll ping you when I've said it. 
Where, where am I setting volume alerts? On the volume indicator on ES. If you go down to the volume indicator and right click, you can set a volume alert. So if it spikes over volume, you get a notification. In this case, I'll probably set it. I'll probably set it. I'll go ahead and tell you. I'll probably set it about 55,000 on a yes on the on the 15 minute chart. There you go. Like a 2-1 runner. So, all right y'all, I will see you all uh maybe this afternoon if not, definitely in the morning. I'm out.